Keep to order. Roll call of Alderman.
Finland and the New Democrat was a miracle that's going to soon be demolished. Well, that was in March of 26, and so far I don't see no out, uh, activity over the marathon. And trash cans, I got fined $600 for a so-called yard nuisance that uh, you couldn't even see unless you trespassed on my property and took pictures. But the uh, flower shop on 2nd and West Main, since uh, Thursday night till tonight, is still four trash cans out on a public sidewalk. And I talked to the police department and the, uh, the uh, street department or somebody, they both said that's illegal. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I can answer that one, okay? If they accidentally miss you and you got to leave them out, um, you know they were uh, left out because they were missed. There was a miscue with a new driver. Well, this was Thursday night to an Monday night. Well, they didn't come. They didn't. They're supposed Thursday to come. On, they're supposed to come on Fridays, okay? And you understand, many of the businesses downtown are built right on the property line, so they have no locations other than such a trash they can't set a street. Well, this is okay. not the first time they've been sitting out for weeks. <coughs> it's not a week. No, I'm not talking about. When the bar shop first opened, those trash cans sitting out there weeks at a time. When they got it, when we cleaned it, renovated it, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Thank right. you. We're glad you're concerned. Yes, sir. Uh, Ricky Ronan, 4567 Northern Road, Waterloo. Um, I just back here again, you know why, so in case you have any questions when we get to that point. And um, I know this was kind of late and everybody got one, but I added up what I did in one year where my lot is in those side with uh, nowhere near the options that I'll have at this lot if I get it. And I also got the application for my tax form with the city address on it. So anybody wants to see it. And um, we stayed out there for two weekends clearing more stuff and put a few things out there just to see what kind of action we would get on a Sunday. Got a lot of signatures, got a signature from the guy that's got the car lot down the road, the church down the road. Um, I just, I got a lot more than what you asked me to get, so just. And then you submitted them to, the, you give them to the um, Yeah, I gave Emily one copy of this, but I made one for everybody if you want them. And I know these were kind of late. Okay, that's fine. I'm here if you got them. Okay. I'll be nervous to be sitting over here. <laughs> Jill Richardson, I'm the property owner, 8420 Highway 15. I have a bunch more signatures, and I also have pictures of the property, of all the improvements that we've done, if anybody hasn't driven by within the last couple weeks. Um, yeah, but I mean, I just have a ton of signatures from people who are okay with everything that we're doing. Okay. Okay? We're ready. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? <coughs> yes, ma'am, in the back of the room. Do you have a copy? Emily, do you have a copy? Oh, we need to, ma'am, we need those copies uh, to be called <coughs> the signature. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought she had a copy.
um, the inspector that was on my property said we needed a permit. And I said, I don't think I do. The building has to be over 150 square feet. And he said, little lady, we're going down that road. We're, we're heading this dis discretion in the wrong way. And I said, I'm just trying to be informed. So the city might, if not under a state law, might willingly do this on its own. And maybe we can have a little bit better report between the people and our elected officials. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Hearing none, I will close public participation. Move to the regular portion of the meeting. At this time, it brings me uh, great pleasure to ask uh, our friend uh, Rusty Wagner to come forward because I have a presentation for Wagner Motor Car. Rusty? Uh, as many of you know by now, um, Wagner Motor Car Company this past month, and we just couldn't get together these indications and your time, etc., um, celebrated its 100th year in business. And I'd like to read you this proclamation and this uh, small token of our appreciation for the fabulous service that your family has given to the city of Illinois and cities around us. The proclamation reads as follows Whereas in 1912, Wagner Motor Car Company opened its doors on August 1st by the company's founder, Gustav Gus P. Wagner, in the 100 block of East A Street, and whereas during the early years, Wagner Motor Car Company represented multiple franchise <coughs> nameplates such as Hudson, Rio, Buick, Oldsmobile, GMC, and several others. And whereas shortly before World War I, Gus Wagner expanded to a new location on the corner of A and Jackson Streets, where operation continued at this location for over 64 years. And whereas in 1935, Gus Wagner passed the company to his oldest son, Kenneth Wagner. And whereas in 1956, Kenneth Wagner passed the company to his son, Wayne Wagner. And whereas in September of 1969, <coughs> Wayne Wagner opened their new location at 4400 North Belt West, where operations continued there for the next 37 years. And whereas in 1985, Wayne Wagner passed the company to his oldest son, Rusty Wagner. And whereas in May of 1992, Rusty Wagner was able to purchase a second franchise GM truck, which gave us trucks, vans, and sport utility vehicles to go along with Buick, the Buick vehicles. And whereas in December 16, 2003, Rusty Wagner completed the purchase of the Pontiac franchise, which put three high-quality GM franchise, Buick, Pontiac, and GMC, together under one roof. And whereas on April 16, 2007, Wagner, Buick, Pontiac GMC opened their beautiful new facilities located at 3800 West State Route 15 in Belleville. And whereas Wagner Buick GM has thrived due to the efforts of four generations of Wagner family dealers, their employees, and the support of the communities it serves. Now therefore, I, Mark W. Eckert, Mayor of the City of Belleville, do hereby recognize and congratulate Wagner Buick GMC for 100 years of uninterrupted service to Belleville through four generations of continuous family leadership, providing quality and value combined with con conscious service to their customers. Rusty, this is a small token, but we know what you've been through. We know what wasn't written in here. We'd have to have a lot bigger document. But the last couple of years have been quite a testimony to your perseverance and to your uh, sticking with Belleville, and we thank you sincerely. very much, Mayor, City Council, members of the city, and citizens. Uh, it, it really is quite an honor here. You know, 100 years in business, for any business to reach 100 years, is uh, really, a, a these days, a testimony. And when it's 100 years under one family ownership, it makes it even a little bit more special. But when that family happens to be yours, it really makes it personal. So. Uh, as we all know, or most of us know in this uh, in this hall right here, uh, this population here was definitely in jeopardy a few years ago and probably uh, was a pipe dream. So I appreciate everybody's efforts and, and uh, sincere thanks to everybody on behalf of the Wagner family, those of us that still survive, 
I wonder what Gustav and Kenneth are thinking right now. But, uh, uh, and uh, I, I want to uh, thank everyone in the community, too, for uh, giving us all the support over all these years. Thank you. I really appreciate it.
motion and a second. Roll call. Ice. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. stationary place um, on West Main and then uh, there's a lot at uh, uh, second and a uh, the old township lot Next that's going to get fixed um, and just to explain so they know about this construction on South <coughs> Street the two they're smaller lots but the lots in question there were part of the negotiations that we did uh, when we got construction easements etc right yes because they were cutting through we had traffic being rerouted through the uh, portions of the lot, and we did we did beat them up with all the construction trucks, etc. Okay. Any questions? We have a motion. We have a second. I appreciate that explanation. Um, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Another motion to approve an amendment to the contract agreement for professional services in the amount of eight thousand six hundred forty dollars plus outside services such as title commissions, appraisal, and review appraisal by the plus fifteen percent. Motion by the 
Seibert, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Silsby, do I hear discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Myers. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rajewicz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. I'm going to ask uh, for a motion to approve the extra work at Kimball Plaza. You should have received today on your, on your desk and today in the email approximately sometime after 2. When the, Let me back up here. The contractors, I explained to the um, Streets and Grades Committee, for those who were present, I guess it was middle of last week, um, Tim Brinkowitz came to me and said that Mr. Mettler, and uh, the workers on site had uncovered a substance that was not, what's the word we're using, Tim? Unsuitable. Unsuitable. I called it muck when I went out and looked at it. But it was unsuitable material. And um, it took them a day or so to kind of get a handle on what we were dealing with, the scope of it. The engineers came out, the geotech person came out from uh, Kaskaskia's office, who's had 30 years of dealing with um, soils. And they all met, and um, they agreed because it was uh, something that had to be modeled over Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday that we would get together this morning and come up with hopefully what we believe is a remedy and a cost. Tonight in front of you, I'm asking for a motion to approve uh, allowing the extra work to be done by a member. It was not an original contract, but in the contract, is the provision, Tim, you want to explain that real quickly, how that's worded? Part of the contract documents state that if, uh, if unsuitable material is, is found within the job, that uh, Medler is required to remove that unsuitable material. Um, there was no pay item for unsuitable material, so by the contract documents, um, he's required to remove that. And, and we're, we basically are going back on a Hourly basis or uh, uh, well, with the, the contract documents talking about, it, they, they say it's force account. It's where you're actually paying for the labor, uh, you're paying for the equipment, and you're paying for the materials. Um, it, it, it's a way to protect both the city and the contractor, so so nobody's really getting hurt on this. Uh, so you're paying for the actual work that's going to be done. And as was explained at the earlier meeting. Um, we had all the people who bid this project, the engineers, the city, our park staff, myself, we had all walked that property. They walked it very carefully before they put their bids together. This until they started using the large earth moving equipment was not found. And it was unfortunate, but apparently there's an old creek bed that was probably maybe covered up 30 years ago, probably back in the 70s maybe even more than 30 years now, it could be 40 years ago. And it's one of those unforeseen, unexpected construction situations that sometimes occur. It was not hidden, it was not overlooked intentionally or looked away from. Uh, as we got going though, we knew that you can't build a road or a parking lot on this unsuitable material that's all wet and, and, and doesn't have the composition it needs to have to compact to make a roadway. It has to all be dug out and it has to be filled properly with, I guess, rock and dirt, right, Mr. Right. Um So I was questioned earlier why I didn't tell you sooner. We did not have the cost estimates until today. They were crunching numbers. They were looking at several different solution possibilities. Uh, they did some sampling digging, so they had a better scope of, of not just getting into a, a, a situation that they couldn't answer here tonight. And, and so I put in the packet that was on the agenda. Uh, one alderman was out at the scene last week, and, and, and the staff explained everything we found. But at that point, I didn't, I didn't get into a dialogue until we had facts. Uh, tonight, um, you know everything we know. I'd ask Mr. Bedler or Jerry, do you have anything else you want to add before we would ask for, before I would call for a motion? They're here for questions if we need them. 
At uh, this time, I would ask for a motion to approve this change order, I guess it is, uh, in the amount of up to $140,000 so that we can have Medlar Construction remove the unsuitable material according to the contract documents and replace it with a suitable material so that the project can continue and the construction can go as planned. Do I hear that motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Alderman, motion by Alderman, sir. Here, it's his motion, but will you second the motion? Alderman Seibert made the motion, came from streets, it came from streets and bridges of savings, and uh, Alderman Ruby would second it. Do I hear any discussion? Yes, sir. Mayor, I, I've listened to you. I understand you didn't have the cost, but you, you didn't think that it was reasonable to at least notify the owner, or at least the owner of the ward with the projects being done, that we have a, a, a potential major problem, so they know what is going on. I, I, I ask that in, 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 in the vein of the mayor, when, when you were in Alderman and Mr. Kern was mayor, when there were major projects going on in your ward and, and there was problems, was there a time that you would ever notify? I don't think we had anything quite like this. And you were notified in your packet Friday afternoon, it should have got to your door by supper time, that had this on the agenda, and, and you could have called me all weekend or this morning and asked more questions. Mm -hmm. Not a one of you did. Not a one, not a one of, um, well, I say that back. A couple people from uh, older, Alderman who've been on here for a while, a couple of you did call me and you didn't ask, because uh, they read it. But, you know, I, I'm, I not, did not receive a call from you, I did not receive a call from Alderman Schneider, and she was out there Thursday, and I was well aware of that, and Tim told me he spent quite a bit of time talking to her, and Mr. Mettler as well, explaining what we could. So, I mean, I knew that the communication was traveling, I mean, but I, I did put it in the packet, and it was well known by Friday afternoon that we had a situation here, and anyone could have called Tim or called me, uh, and we'd have been glad to, but I did not have the time Thursday or Friday to, to get on the, and, and start emailing everyone personally or get into a dialogue, texting, or to get on the phone, it was not possible. But, but so, we so in other words, if I would have called you, you wouldn't have been able to talk to me. Anyway. I would have told you exactly the thing what I told you right now. We're working on a price. This is what we found. It was unexpected, and I would have told you the same thing. But, I mean, I'm just telling you, until today when I met with the engineers, the contractor, uh, our staff, et cetera, in my office at 11 a.m. this morning, we didn't have a total solution plan or the, all the facts until we all sat down and brought our, they brought their individual um, talents to the table and we then made a decision. Did, did we do borings? No, we did not do borings. Um, we chose not to do borings when the project was first started because, Jerry, do you want to answer that? Tim, you want well, to? I mean, you, you could have done borings, but uh, there, there was still a chance that you would not have bored where this um, creek bed was. And, and boring would have been very expensive and we would have had to clear anyway. Right, you, yeah, you, you would have had to clear the site um, in order to do the boring. So there, there would have been some cost incurred. Fair to say pretty significant. Sure, but we would have known a what was going on. Possibly. Possibly, if you would have bored in the areas that had the unsuitable material. This this uh, material, this unsuitable material, you found. You say it's from the '70s, so there was no indication that there was a creek bed there with all the, the watershed studies that we've done between Route 17 and the park itself. There was no indications that there was a, a, a creek bed there that was covered up. And, and when I say it's unsuitable, it's unsuitable to put a roadway in a parking lot. On that, uh, it, it can be wasted in areas to where there's going to be grass. So it's it's just unsuitable it's for parking lots. It's just not compaction. Uh, Correct. Great. And we're 100 percent sure that we've got all of it. Well, we, we, we're, that's, that's why we took our time before we started calling everybody, and we did the research and we did the exploration to find out how big and wide of a problem and how deep the problem we have. We feel it's approximately seven, place, seven foot deep in some places, possibly in the middle as deep as 10, and as it starts to back out, he thinks it might taper back to six or so. So 
that took a couple days to come to determination, but it was believable. Uh, no one's more uh, unhappy about the fact that this is going to cost any more than I am. But it's one of those construction things that it does happen from time to time where a construction project or a remodeling project of some time doesn't go exactly as planned. Has any of the extra work already been done? Very minimal, just for him to get a look at what we had and to be able to come up with these proposals tonight. He had to do some digging, uh, and we approved that minimal amount just so that he could get a handle on what we were really dealing with. Yeah, we had to do some exploration to see how, how deep it was going in some of these areas. So we could come up with a, an estimate, and we're pretty confident that um, the 140000 is the worst case scenario. Alderman Elmer, you have a question. I, uh, yeah, this is very disappointing, as you say. Um, I went back and thought about our $40 million sewer plant that we're in the middle of, and this is a change order. And our $40 million sewer plant, I believe, we're at about a million dollars for the change orders. Absolutely. Uh, this is disappointing, and I've been publicly critical on this part of the so that's not what's on the table here. What's on the table here is we have a change order, which you have change orders with construction projects. And uh, that's why I ask in that committee meeting, point blank, have you done every test you could possibly think of? Two engineers say they have. I'm not an engineer, but I do know, just from my experience with, for example, the sewer plant, Change orders are complex. Dr. Silsby pointed out building township high school. Change orders happen. They are extremely disappointing. They are extremely frustrating. But it is part of a construction project, as disappointing as this is. And again, I just hope we have done every test. And if we haven't, Please speak up, because I think we need to say, okay, let's do whatever testing that probably should have been done when the park was purchased, when the property was purchased. That was five years ago. We're not going to beat a dead horse. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, call it an owner, but you bought property, you wouldn't go out and, and, and do the drilling before you bought the property. We did, we did, we had a firm that certified go out and do the phase one environmental we did all those tests okay um, it was it's 42 acres of wooded area most of it's pretty wooded they did find some tires dumped in different places back there and some of the thick brush and that stuff that was overgrown there was people over the years now understand this property didn't even come into the city limits annexed to the city until 2006 does that sound about right Emily I think that's I think that's correct it was right about it was right about the time we were when Rusty was getting going out there, and, and, and Mr. Calhoun had the had the Family Horizon uh, uh, Senior Complex. That was and, and part of the deal was he would annex if we made the road come, you know, as the road he had he had to have access to get in his property. That was part of the deal, part of the annexation agreement. So until 2006, roughly, I'm sure it was six, this property was in the county, and yes, there was no one dumping on it. I remember as an alderman calling uh, St. Clair County uh, Health Department and other officials to report dumping on the English site because constituents would call me and say they're dumping back on that 40 acres. So I'm not surprised that they found a few tires and some of this stuff. But we didn't know there was the muck there. We didn't know that this creek was there. The watershed studies showed the watershed as it is today, draining through the spillway and all the, as it filters over did not indicate this, and, and, and it's, it's unfortunate, but now that we've dug down, and the other thing is, since asking, answering one of your other questions, they have gone since this occurred this weekend, and you have done some potholing on the sites where we're gonna build the restroom and also um, the pavilions. Right. And you found that to be no problem, correct? We have done the compaction testing for the restroom and the gazebo, and we're meeting compaction. Now, now I just want so you to understand, it's solid ground. Kimbo Plaza is about what, Jerry, two acres? No, how many acres? Three. three acres, okay. So I, I think we what we're telling you tonight is on this three acres, we feel pretty, we feel confident that what we found is what we found. 
But now in the remaining 39 acres of the park, we did not, and we have no other plans at this point, nothing approved and nothing else planned to do at this point, but, but we, have, we do not have, I cannot sit here and tell you that the other 39 acres are absolutely crystal clear, ready to build on if we come up with another plan. We're going to have to take that in consideration as we move forward, and we're going to have to study this further. But this was totally unexpected. It was not intentionally overlooked. It was not haphazardly overlooked. It was one of those unforeseen things in construction, and we stumbled into it, as luck may have it. But I feel confident where we're at now. I had them all rounded up today around the table, and we went through a pretty lengthy hour and a half meeting of discussion about all the questions I asked them about. And I, you know, IDNR is fine with all the permits. There's no hazardous material. It's a suitable, just not suitable for building, but it's not a, a hazardous material that's being spread in some of the areas to dry and will be seeded over, et cetera, in the future. So we're going to use it. We don't have to spend the waste to haul it out. Alderman Carpenter. Uh, Tim, that explained, I'm not on the committee for the streets and parade, you can explain this to me. The roadway, is, that, is this the problem that where this is, is where the roadway is going? Part, part of the roadway is, is going over the old, old creek bed. Um, and that creek, uh, little sliver that comes through uh, the parking lot. So the parking lot and the roadway um, encounter this uh, creek, and which is approximately no about to, 10 foot deep. There's no way we can change the road at a different angle to try to bypass this? Because the, the existing creek is on the other side. Right. Uh, the existing creek is on the other side of the roadway. So, uh, and, and considering also all the carpenter just for just to you know maybe bring you up if you have what we have been approved by our IDNR was a process that started last November, so we have the plan approved. They also did all their studies. Nobody, nobody saw this, yeah, but there really isn't a lot of wiggle room to go with re, re, re uh, designing it because there's another creek, the, 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 the active creek that we know about is, is just a few feet over. Yeah, a redesign like that would send everything back to the Department of Natural Resources. And it would send sort of cost even more because we'd be redesigning the whole project. Well, the grading is mostly complete as well already. Yeah. Uh, Tim, who, who was the company that surveyed the land? Was it KSKSV Engineering? Yes, it was. Okay, and it was properly surveyed. I mean, you've, you've seen all the paperwork and you were there. And, okay, yeah. All of your time. Um, I have a couple of things. First, I really want to come back on the special. You could have called the special meeting to let us know about this. Um, because um, in the paper, you said, Eckert said city officials aren't trying to keep information from all of them and developers. Simply needed time to gather information about the issue. Well, then the issue still comes back to the aldermen. We need time. You're giving us information that we're getting in no time at all. Next thing, you said you knew about the dumping. Okay, I consider tires to be hazardous waste. Be and smaller. you are dumping them up on the other end of the park. No, no, I no, have they've, been, they've, been, they've been set up there, Alderman Schneider. They're dumped. So they're going, no, they're going to be removed this week if they haven't already been considered today. And we explained that to you in the earlier meeting. But you're still dumping them. They're not dumping them. They placed them up there. We're going to they the thing. Oh, and the next question is the parking lot. Is the parking lot done since it has a dug out all the muck that you're going to dig out since you have all the rock in there? The, the parking lot is not done. We have built um, some of this to grade on the, the, the areas that are stable. But so you if you go out there, you will see some, 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 some part of the Kimball uh, Plaza is, is already up to grade. It's because we have suitable soils underneath there. So where the, all the rock is at, that is suitable ground? As soon as we start with the, with the finishing this, that, that parking lot is so not finished. That, we still we still have to dig out, out some unsuitable material. But, you are, but where the rock is, you've already dug the muck out. We have dug the muck out there, yes. So, so you should not have done that in a couple hours and have all the rock no, all that, that No, that parking lot was getting some rock. Before, has, there's no muck up there up in parts of that, right, Mr. Governor? That rock was going to compact that for parking so that you could park and drive on it. That was getting rock anyway. But they had to dig the muck out of there before they could put the rock in. Yeah, no. Not in that section. Not in that section. 
there, there was no muck in the, in the, the vast majority of the parking lot had no problem. Is that correct, fair to say? Correct. The channel kind of goes across the parking lot at the time. You know? I think there were some maps we had earlier that showed it. Okay. But dumping tires still dumping tires. We didn't dump the tires, we're cleaning them up. Right. You transferred them from one spot. Alderman one Schneider, spot. we took them out of the area that they're working. We set them up top, and they're going to be gone in the next day or two. So you're going to go through all that muck if there's some in the middle or something, because they're not all in one spot. I didn't place both of those tires that I could pick yourself. I'm, right I'm sorry if we didn't move the tires to your satisfaction, but the tires were going to be removed properly, and they're going to be discarded up in the proper way. And, and the, the placing up on that top area is a very temporary day or two uh, movement until they can get them done. And you heard Mr. Mettler in the previous meeting, you had all these answers. Mr. Mettler? Right, that's correct. We found some tires throughout the digging process. Some are mixed in, some are on erosion sites. We've taken them away from the areas that are being filled and moved, place them up top, and as soon as we're done with the muck, we'll get a dumpster and dispose of them. We're just doing it now until we get it all done. But I still question why we weren't told ahead of time. <coughs> You said you need time. You're not giving us time to make any decision. We have to vote on it at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. You've had three or four days to talk to people. In, in all we honesty, do no I amount didn't of have money. the numbers until today. All right, you're saying you need time. Now we need time. I would like well, to. Schneider, you knew on Thursday as much as I knew. You went out there. I'm sure you told other individuals about what you found. And there's no doubt in my mind. Um, and, and so there was no longer a secret. It was well communicated. Why should it have been kept a secret? It wasn't meant to be a secret, but I didn't have all the information. There was nothing being hidden. The staff was working on it. The professionals were working on it. The people who had the experience and the, and the knowledge of how to deal with this. Um, I trust them. And, and I, I trust that we've got good people working for us. We've got good staff and we've hired good people. Uh, it's unfortunate, as I said, but I believe we have a solution. Unfortunately, every solution today and anything we do has a price. And it's unfortunate. And I, I, I'm, I'm saddened by that. But there's there's nothing that's Alderman Kinsella. Your Honor, uh, as far as letting people know initially, the problem is the first question, if you'd have called me on Wednesday and said we got a problem, I'd say how much does it cost? And if you don't have the cost factor, it doesn't help much. And also, I would like to mention that this is truly a construction problem. These kinds of things happen, and we cannot wait a long period of time for us to make up our mind. If you look at this, we already have contracted with this con construction company to repair this. This is, this is what they do, and they, they are already contracted. The problem is we just have to decide to approve it. And if we would not approve it, we'd stop the entire project. And that would cause a lot of inconvenience, and it would cause a lot of cost and setbacks to the contractor. So I have no problem with not finding out about it until you knew the cost. That's a logical thing. I have no problem with making a decision in a 15-minute time period because I see no other alternative. If you had something, what would you have done differently if you knew that it cost 140000 last Wednesday. I think my decision would be the same. Anyone else to see? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I feel that this is a problem to the contract and visionary firm. Uh, I, I don't think the taxpayers are liable for this. Well, I, I personally disagree with you. I think you never get people to. Project cost would be bid. If you didn't have something like this in, contracts when they run into something highly unusual, which does happen occasionally. Um, the, the, the taxpayers will pay through the nose because everybody will have to jack up prices even greater to cover the what ifs. There's a provision in here that we remove unsuitable material and replace it with suitable material, and that is to be worked out the cost, in, a, in this case it's called a force account, uh, and that's what was spelled out, which is pretty typical in all these contracts. Am I correct, guys? Yes. So, and this protects the taxpayers because if we didn't have that provision, this price would, people would bid this stuff so much higher to protect themselves because they couldn't afford to absorb these losses if they found the unexpected. Uh, it's not fair. You run businesses out of, uh, people out of business. Mr. Member? Uh, one thing to add, too, on, on the force account, 
the rates are set up by the state of Illinois, so it's, we're not just coming in and saying right. $100,000. Right. That's a this very good all, point. This is all set up and, and governed by the state of Illinois. Mr. Hayden. Yeah, I wasn't initially done, but that's fine. Uh, Ms. Metler, when, when did you first run into this? Uh, the first time you noticed that you ever have an unsuitable soil, when did you first see it? What day? Last week? Probably around Tuesday. Uh, the material, as we got further in the project, put the extremely heavy equipment on there that's moving the, the dirt from the fill sites. The unsuitable material is full of moisture. And as you travel the, the uh, property, it actually starts coming up and squirting through the crust that's on this there. As soon as you hit it, sir, you immediately notify it. And, and Tim contacted me on Wednesday. It was like today, Tuesday. So it was Tuesday, you were notified Wednesday. And then they agreed that they were going to explore it a little bit, try to give us, give, come back to me to give me a little bit. And they, at the time they told me on Wednesday, I had no idea of the magnitude yet at that time. We had given They had no idea. So it was, they were going to, and so Thursday, now he also did say that we were going to do a minimal amount of exploring and then try to meet and, 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 and figure out where we were at. In the meantime, he did work on other parts of the site on Thursday and on Friday. So, I mean, there's nothing, it just took them a little bit of time to get the handle on what we were really dealing with and then get together with the engineers went out there Thursday or Friday, they went out Thursday, I guess, and, and, and they started putting their heads together and exploring what we had. So, but we still didn't have a cost. I was off the majority of the day on Friday and, and they called me by phone and, and, you know, and I received a call from the newspaper on Friday because the newspaper told me, Oliver Schneider had called the newspaper. I received a call from Elliot Davis and said he received a call. So we, you know, and I, I didn't have nothing to tell all these people because we didn't have all the facts yet. So, I mean, you know, and, and so once again, uh, we call Elliot Davis, we, and I had no problem, I had no problem at all talking to Jacqueline. I told her, her she quoted me fine in the paper today. Uh, there was no problem with that article. She called me late Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, and I answered her right away. I, I, I'm sharing everything we know. There's no hidden agenda here. It's unfortunate, and we have a motion in a second. I'm, 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 just, I'm not saying there's a hidden agenda, Mayor. I just, I'm just saying from my perspective, I, I think could have been more in that agenda than just extra work. Can I ask Some, you a question, Mr. Hayes? Sure. You worked in a couple different cities. Yes. Every time you ran into something unusual, which I'm sure you did in your experience, I'm sure you did. If not, you were very lucky. Did you go and call every alderman? No, but our city manager did. <laughs> Our city manager, sir, sent out, and we still, that was back in the age when we still had electronic mail. And, and, and an email yeah, immediately would go out. before they even held the facts. We would let them know that we have run into this problem and we have a potential thing that we will have to serve because we have a contingency. We have a contingency on every single project. Let me ask you this set. You, you, um, okay. Uh, 50%. And, and we wanted them to know up front and have them go out there and look at it if they wanted to, especially those people that if it was in their ward, because our goal, to be quite frank with you, Your Honor, was to build a rapport so we didn't create this type of stuff that's going on now. And you sit here in, 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 in this evening and say, why didn't you call me? Leadership starts well, at the top. You got the packet you questioned. All I'm saying is you never called. You, you, you know, last, last meeting, you, you actually accused me of not following up on my request to you and staff to have a silk fence put out there. And it's in the minutes. That's not my job. I just think we're here. You know, I, I, I just want to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's, you know, I, it, it's communication, you know. That, that is my issue. You know, I'm the representative of, of the people. You know, and, and I'm the representative of people too. The 225th anniversary of, of, of the uh, U.S. Constitution today. And, and we're supposed to be for the people, by the people. And, and how do we do that when we're not informed of what's going on? You could have, and you're going to tell me with your staff, did you, other than we, we run into you know, an extra work, you couldn't have said we're going to have same, The problems. same group of you, though, you, you, want, you want more and more information, you want more and more stuff, but the same, you're the same person, a couple of you, want to you think we have too much clerical help, I have too many assistants. I mean, you folks, you, you inundate the staff and myself with emails stacks this high. We, we have to have staff do research. 
day after day departments because of the alderman's request. We, we've sent enough stuff to your house, you're going to have to build a room on pretty soon for all the stuff we've sent you uh, to copy and give you besides electronically. I mean, we have complied, but we all we were doing was trying to get a reasonable handle on a pro the, the problem so I could talk to you intelligently. If I'd have had everything before today, I would have forwarded to you. But I did not have it until we sat down after 11 a.m. this morning, we all sat in the conference room and sat down and they totally briefed me and they totally sat down and discussed what they felt the worst case scenario was. And that's the honest to goodness truth. Now we have a motion and we have a second on the floor to approve up to $140,000 so that the change order can be approved and we can continue with this project. Is there anything that has not already been discussed? Just Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Priscilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Roger West. Aye. Carpenter. No. Hart. No. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. No. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. No. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. No. So we got uh, 15 here, 5 no's, and 10 yes's. Correct, Mrs. I got 10 eyes. 10 eyes. Motion carries. We move on. All of us, do you have anything else? Okay, we have a, I'm asking for a motion to approve submission of a grant application to the Metro East Parks and Recreation District for construction of a restroom at Huff Park. Um, we have a motion by Alderman Parker. I'm right here a second. Second by Alderman Meyer. We're here discussion on that. Um, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Roger Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. No. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Silsby. Your Honor, on behalf of the police department, we would like to make the following two motions together from our own. Is there a problem with making them together? Proceed. First motion is to approve the hiring of a probationary firefighter. <coughs> Second motion is to approve the chief called to name who acting as assistant moral chief effective September 18, 2012 at 8 a.m. So moved. Very good. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Cyber to approve these two motions coming from uh, uh, Police and Fire Committee and also understand that the uh, motion, the recommendation to make uh, uh, J.P. Panay the acting assistant fire chief came from the Police and Fire Commissioners. We have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Radulich. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden, Cyber, Martinson, Elmore, Aye. Schneider, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Arlen. Motion carries. Communications. Communications. I can read them all as one and be all as one. Proceed. Communication from St. Elizabeth's Hospital requesting permission to decorate the light poles going down Main Street and Illinois Street for three blocks on each side of the fountain using pink ribbon to support breast cancer awareness month and to put them up on September 28th and remove them on November 1st, 2012. Communication from Belleville East High School requesting permission to hold their fifth annual Lancer Run of the Charity 5K Run Walk event on November 3rd, 2012 at 9 a.m. and requesting help of the Belleville Police Department to control the flow of traffic at the intersections of Archer Drive and 61 and at Archer Drive and Escalade from 845 until 945 a.m. Communication from the Optimist Club of Belleville requesting permission to hold the annual Santa Parade on Friday, November 23, 2012 at 10 a.m. starting at 17th Street and West Main Street and disbanding at Union United Methodist Church near Forest Avenue. Communication department called for help in requesting permission to hold a trunk or treat event from 5 to 7.30 p.m. on October 31, 2012 in the parking lot of 5600 West Main Street. Communication from the Optimist Club of Belleville requesting permission to hold Mike Belleville on Sunday, October 21st, 2012, from 1 to 4 p.m. using the Richland Creek Greenway Trail with a maximum of 300 participants. No street closures or police presence necessary. Communication from Steve and Jackie Sullivan notifying the city that they will be holding the 10th anniversary party 
for Sullivan's on Saturday, October 13, 2012, with the Day of Music and Celebration to mark the event to be held in their newly purchased parking lot. No street closures, etc. necessary. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second. second by Alderman Meyer to approve this uh, list of requests that was just read. Any comments, questions, concerns? All in favor of this list of communications signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have no petitions this evening. I ask for a motion to read resolution 3107, 3115, and 3116 by title only. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Heister. Uh, all in favor of the motion to read by title only those three resolutions signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. If there's no objection, can I read them all uh, together? And no problems with that? And Proceed. Resolution number 3107, a resolution amending the annual budget of the city of Belleville, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning on the first day of May 2012 and ending on the 30th day of April 2013. Resolution number 3115. A resolution authorizing the City of Elba, Illinois to proceed with the offering for sale of general obligation refunding bonds. Resolution number 3116. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a second amendment and the restated declaration of trust. Motion to approve resolution 3107, 3115, and 3116. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Heister to approve those three resolutions. Any questions? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Consola. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodwood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Park. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Marlowe. Aye. Motion carries. Ordinances. We have none this evening. Unfinished business. We have the Zoning Board of Appeals Advisory Report. Um, this is case number 15. Requesting an area of bulk variance in order to build a 1,955 square foot duplex on a vacant lot that is only approximately 7,491 square feet in area on North 12th Street, more accurately identified as parcel 08 2103 30 in an A2 two family zoning district. Zoning Board of Appeals requests the update. Your Honor, I'd like to not make a recommendation that the only board and deny this statement. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Consilla. Discussion? Roll call. Motion to I to be to deny. Okay. This is a roll call. Roll call. High Aye. Consilla? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Roger Woods? Aye. Carpenter? No. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Snyder? Aye. 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 Motion carried to deny. Case, case number 55. Um, Jill and Darnell Darrell Richardson requesting a use variance in order to operate a used car dealership. For 30 to 40 cars at 8330 West State Route 15 and A1 single family residential zoning district. The zoning board appeals request that it be denied. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to accept the variance. Second. To approve the variance, right? Well, I'd like to uh, add a stipulation to that. Okay. Uh, See if the two people will accept the stipulation and we'll this here stipulation. It, uh, within a one year from today's date, there is to be a building added to the lot and I have an employee that will stay on the lot to take care of sales <coughs> within one year. Was there something else? Um, you said there was, there was stipulations, I thought you said, I'm sorry. Well, Okay. okay, that's fine. Okay. Do you two accept that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Did you accept it? Yes. Well, the only question feedback I've got is the precedent we're setting about having a lot a vacant lot with no one there uh, as a storage area. And I think this gives you a year to test it out and to make that decision. And I thought this was a fair consideration. Mr. Rubin? <clears throat> If this thing 
takes off. I mean, I've got a guy that lives in a trailer right behind the fiddle. It's, I mean, he can look out his front door and see my lot. And I've got him a golf cart already. I mean, and I'm going to... Well, we'll have to work it out for you. Well, I mean, listen, I have no problem. I mean, if this goes good, I'll have him there in six months. Uh, well, you'll have to work with Emily and our, through our standards and what we have to do, but yeah. I'm just, I, I do agree that I think sometime we're going to dare, not just to, not because big, we open big. ourselves up for, right. for other people we denied in the past. Right. Um, Mr. Musgrove suggested a building. What kind of building is on um, It's going to have to meet our zoning on that particular site in that area. So we'll have to work with Emily and questions will have to be reviewed. But so there are, can there I are ask what are the recommendations for a site like that? Or like Mr. Dingus, he has just a very small building with a garage on the back. So what will the recommendations be so this man knows? I mean, I would, we I would recommend after we get moving forward tonight that he comes in and talks to Emily. And we try to start to research how you could, what you would work towards that would be approval, that would be acceptable. We would do whatever you want us to do. I mean, yeah. I'll do whatever. And the only other thing is, we need at that time then we need a site plan, right, Emily? Yeah. You've got to have a site plan yeah. so that you know we can. You know, that, that would be the only thing. So, um, you two, both gentlemen, uh, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them accepted that. Now here, them accepted. You have no problem. Right. So we have a motion in the second to approve this. Case number 55 with the stipulation that within a year from the day that they would uh, not just have an empty a lot with, that's vacant with no tenant that's no building no office on site but they would move to work and have that done at that time everybody understand that roll call aye sir this is to approve to approve yes aye himself aye meyer aye anderson aye rajewitz aye carpenter aye Hart, aye. Selsgate, aye. Hayden, aye. Cyber, Mark Martinson, aye. Elmore, aye. Schneider, aye. Musgrove, aye. Arlen, aye. Motion carries. Miscellaneous. Besides motor fuel, anything else? I do want to announce that, um, so I don't forget to get to the meeting. We're going to be calling. We're here tomorrow. We'll put it out. A special finance meeting, of, uh, September 25th, a Tuesday at 6 p.m. in this room. And, and the whole agenda isn't done, but it's primarily to go through the RFQs for the insurance program, right? Okay, so that, that's what the main purpose. There could be another uh, ancillary thing added to the agenda when it's published and goes out, but I want to make sure we made the announcement. Motor fuel claims the amount of 72,757.65. Motion by Alderman Seibert, I hear a second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion on motor fuel? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer.
any money. And the so, Meredith home? Any money? The Meredith home, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and I don't, you know, um, I don't have this in stone. I'm hoping that we're going to uh, uh, have uh, some additional money possibly for demolition uh, and that we could possibly go out for bid. I think it'd be wise to go out for bid on that in the winter months because I think contra I think the, I think the uh, bids will come back a little bit more favorable, favorable when, when contractors, right now they're still, they're scurrying, they're busy right now trying to get a lot of projects done. When they get a bid package right now and they're busy, I, I don't think they sharpen their pencil as much as they do in maybe December. Uh, something like that when they're looking for what they're going to do in the spring and in the January. So that's what I'm hoping. But I don't, don't, don't hold my feet totally to the fire that because I don't have all the details. There's been some obstacles, as we know, but we're working towards that. Okay? What are the, certain obstacles? Is it just cost or what? You said there's obstacles. Well, we've looked at several grants, but the grants were for new construction and not for demolition. We thought we had a grant that was going to be uh, help match what we had in the budget, and we thought we could have had this thing resolved by now. But when we got into the specifics of the grant, we found out the grant was for building a new park, but not for demolition of old existing building. So that was one of the obstacles we ran into. In fact, in two different grants. So that's that's where I'm at. That's, that's, and it took some time to do a little research and get those uh, get those uh, facts back to us. But that's where we're at. Okay, at this time I'd ask for a motion to go into executive session. We have uh, uh, a personnel issue to deal with this evening. We don't have, uh, Jim Schneider's not here today, he's off today. And by next meeting, we probably will have several contracts uh, ready to go by next meeting, I believe. Uh, so, uh, this is litigation and, and personnel, so I'm sorry, it's a it's litigation uh, issue. So at this time I ask for a motion to go into executive session. For those purposes. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman High start the discussion. All in favor of going to executive session signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.